In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at Kepler's three laws. We're gonna be taking a look at each law individually so we can thoroughly discuss the concepts, starting off with Kepler's first law, the law of ellipses. So it states that the path of the planets about the sun is elliptical in shape with the center of the sun being located at one focus. So let's have a little bit of um, background with centripetal force and circular motion before we talk about some terms and ideas that relates to the law of ellipses. Now, in some cases, there is a large body that orbits around a star, our star being called the sun, but it's just basically a star. Now, what happens is after planets form, if they become a little bit too close to the actual star, the force of gravity will pull it in and they're going to collide. If the velocity of the planet is a little bit too great or it's a little bit too far, it won't actually fall in orbit. So there has to be a special set of conditions where the um, the large body is moving and then gets pulled in by the force of gravity from the sun. And in the correct set of conditions, something will get pulled into orbit. Now, for an object to get pulled into a perfect circular orbit isn't impossible, but is extremely unlikely because the conditions to even have it fall into orbit are already very unlikely. That's why there's not millions and millions of planets around our sun. So basically what's happening is these things have some velocity that get pulled in and then now all of a sudden they're in a orbital uh, in orbit. Now they're getting pulled by the sun along with many other planets and bodies around it. So they're affected by the sun um, predominantly, but then also by other things around it, um, such as the other planets. So now let's take a look at this ellipse over here. So this is the shape, the general shape that most planets orbit in. Now the elliptical shape for most planets orbit is actually pretty subtle. So for the earth, it's pretty subtle. And then it's extremely subtle for something such as Venus, but maybe a little bit greater for something such as Mercury. So we have an orbital, orbital eccentricity of three different things on the screen, just to give you a, a little gauge of what those look like. Now the eccentricity is basically a measurement of how much this circle is squished down and widened out. So let's talk about a few terms. So we have two different focal points or foci. So this is a focus and this is a focus too. The sun being located at one of the foci. And then we have a bunch of different distances and terms that we're gonna cover. So this orange line over here is called the semi-minor axis. And we have this gold line over here, which is called the semi-major axis. Along with that, we have three more distances. We have this purple line over here, which is the aphelion. It's the point in orbit, or excuse me, it's the perihelion. It's the point in orbit closest to the sun. So. This, here's our point in orbit. Here is our black elliptical path. And then here's the point in orbit that is closest to it. So this is gonna be our perihelion. And then for our, our aphelion, it's the point in orbit farthest from the sun. So we have the sun over here, and then this red line over here is gonna be the distance that is farthest in its elliptical path. And the final one we're going to want to look at is this green distance right here, which is known as C, which is basically the distance to the focus. Now, if you want to find the eccentricity of the elliptical orbit, you basically just divide two numbers. That formula is known as E equals C over A where our C is the distance from the center to the focus where the sun is at. Um, and then the second thing is gonna be our semi-major axis, which is known as A. So if you have those two distances and you divide them, that's gonna tell you your eccentricity that is between zero and one. And it's basically telling you how squished your circle is and kind of like how widened out it is.
So that basically covers Kepler's first law, showing all of the different um, vocabulary words and distances. And the main idea is that all of these planets are orbiting in an elliptical shape. So let's go ahead and take a look at Newton's, or not Newton's second law, Kepler's second law. Kepler's second law is showing that an imaginary line drawn from the center of the sun to the center of the planet will sweep out equal areas and equal intervals of time known as the law of equal areas. Um, basically what that means is, so say for example you have the Earth or some other planet in its elliptical orbit and it moves for, we'll say, we'll make up a time, we'll say 50 days and within 50 days it moves from here to here now an imaginary line is drawn from the center of the sun to each of those points and that covers a total of 50 days and this part shaded in is our first area now our second part is as our planet sweeps around the orbit this way it may start over here and then say for example it sweeps around after 50 days and ends up over here same thing you draw an imaginary line from the center of the sun to the planet at each of those two points and this portion of its elliptical orbit is also 50 days if we color that in and find that area, the orange area would be equal to the green area. Now you notice that in our orange part of our path, it covers more of the orbit because it's closer to the sun. So it has a greater force of gravity pulling it inwards. Therefore, it has a slightly greater centripetal force. So it's gonna start to move around the ellipse slightly quicker, but because it's closer, that line drawn out isn't gonna <clears throat> be as long as this green one here and in the end those areas are going to be equal so i basically describe it as the area it sweeps out for a certain period of time on any part of the ellipse is going to be equal to each other so let's go ahead and take a look at kepler's third law for kepler's third law it says the ratio of the squares of the periods of any two planets is equal to the ratio of the cubes of their average distances from the sun which is called the law of harmonies now for this one, I like to write it out a little bit differently, and you'll see after a couple minutes um, how I write it and why I think it's a little bit more clear. So say, for example, we have a planet right over here, and it has a certain R value, which is its distance away from the sun. And then it also has a T value, which is the amount of time it takes to orbit the sun. All planets basically have a similar property it has a certain R value, and then it has a certain T value, how long it takes to orbit. So we'll call the green one R1 and T1, and then we'll go ahead and call this one R2 and T2. Now, this is basically how it works. So when you take a look at any mass that is orbiting the sun, then it feels the force of gravity, GMM over R squared, which is the universal law of gravitation. And that equals the centripetal force, which is mv squared over R. <clears throat> so it turns out that the mass of the actual planet gets canceled out, but then not the mass of the sun. So we'll put n sub s for mass of the sun. Now what we can do is we can rearrange this a bit and then we can solve for the ratio of r cubed over t squared. I'll show you what that looks like momentarily. So since every planet is experiencing the force of gravity as their centripetal force, then GMM over R squared equals MV squared over R for every planet in orbit. 
As we said before, the mass of the actual planet drops out and the mass of the sun stays there. So we did one substitution. The velocity is 2 pi r over t, 2 pi r basically being that circumference and then the t being the period, the time it takes to orbit around the sun. Now, if we take that, place it in here, everything gets squared. So it turns into, the two turns into a four, the pi turns into pi squared, the r turns into r squared and the t squared drops into the denominator one of the r's drops out. And then I just cross multiply the four pi squared with the r squared. Now the r squared pulls up right next to this r and becomes r cubed. The t squared stays there. And then now we have a ratio over here. Now capital G, the gravitation constant, 6.67 times 10 to negative 11th, the mass of the sun, four and pi squared or are all constants for any planet that's orbiting the sun. So it's basically saying the ratio of that R value, which we talked about what the R value was before, the distance to the sun, um, the ratio of the R value cubed divided by the period squared is equal to a constant for all of the planets, which means that all of their ratios are equal. So if you take any planet and you take their distance from the sun and cube it, and you take their period of um, their orbit and you square it, all of them are going to equal the same ratio no matter which planet you take, and that is the law of harmonies. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand Kepler's first, second, and third law. Thank you for watching and listening.